This is me, Undead Viking. I'm going to show you this game. It's called Palaces. Now, Palaces is a card game that has some deck building going on in it. It has uh, not really trick taking, but like bidding to take cards, if you will. Kind of hard to explain until I actually show you how to play, which I'll do in just a little bit. But also, it's it's a tower building game. And mind you, this is a prototype, but I have these cool little discs, and they come in four different colors that represent gold, silver. Uh, marble and crystal and uh, basically each person is in charge of ah, basically each person's in charge of building uh, their 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 palace that's why the name of the game is palace uh, palaces I should say and what you're doing is you have to win win cards that allow you to build these little discs on top of each other and you're going to be building two towers uh, to your palace but it is trickier than it sounds because there's four different colors. You have to actually uh, color match your two towers and, and make sure that they remain the same. And then at the end, when the, the end of the game comes, um, you're going to be judged by how good you built your towers. And by that, I mean you take both of your towers, whichever one is the shortest, and if they tie, then both of them are the shortest. Whichever one is the shortest, however many levels they have to it is how many points that's worth. And, and so you can't just concentrate on building one really tall tower and leaving one alone because that one that you left alone is going to be the one that matters when it comes to decide who wins the game. So let me show you uh, how to play Palaces. It's got some cool card powers and some cool uh, options as far as the mechanisms go and, and some tricks and tips, if you will. And then we'll come back here and I'll talk to you more uh, about Palaces and uh, what I think of it. All right, awesome. All right, let's show you how to play Palaces. So, uh, to begin the game, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take out all these little tower discs that you're going to have. And mind you, this is a prototype that I'm, I've been playing, so I don't know if they're going to be using the exact same type of components. But regardless, these represent the different levels of the two towers that you're going to be building. I mentioned that in the introduction. You're also going to be given a 12... Uh, card deck of basic resources. Uh, they come in silver, uh, marble, which I think will be jade when the game goes into production, uh, crystal, and gold. And you'll shuffle these up and you're going to draw four cards and that'll be your starting hand. And each person starts with the same exact 12 cards and then you draw four. So let me see. One, two, three, four. All right. And so let's see what we got. Oh, well, we got... Uh, a crystal, a crystal, a gold, and a gold. So, okay, that, that'd be our starting hand. Now, uh, then there's these three decks of cards here, and these are the cards that you're going to be buying that are going to be improving your deck. So, uh, they come in three different types. They come in a dungeon, a garden, and a castle. Now, obviously, you can't tell what they are from the back, but uh, just to quick show you, uh, the dungeon has these portcullis bars you can see here that signifies that it is a dungeon card. Uh, the, the, the garden, here let me just show you, you can probably see it a little better. You can see the leaves over there and that is shows that, that is a uh, garden card. And finally uh, the, the castle has this kind of a maze or mason uh, like symbol over here and that shows that those are castle cards. Now unlike uh, the basic resource cards uh, that, I, that I showed here. These cards, they're, they're a resource, so you can tell by the color. You know, so, you know, here's uh, the marble or jade, you know, gold, uh, silver, and crystal. You can see the, because of the color, but um, they also have special powers. So, like, you can discard any two cards to build a silver level to one of your towers, things like that. And those happen uh, when you play those cards. Now... So, uh, to begin the game, you're going to have these three decks, and each one of those has 24 cards. And what you're going to do is you're going to take 12 cards out of each deck. Now, you do that for two reasons. One, uh, it's so you can't tell, you know, you can't know exactly what 12 cards you're going to play with. Uh, as far as, you, you can't count on certain cards from showing up after you become accustomed to the game. And two, uh, running out of one of these decks is one of the ways to end the game. And so, like, obviously, if you have all 24 cards, the game's going to last a lot longer. Uh, the other way the game can end is if you use up all of the uh, tower levels in, in a certain color. And then that would signify the end of the game as well. So let me do some uh, video editing magic, and I'm going to take 12 of those cards away. 
All right, cool. You've now traveled into the future with me, and we have each one of these decks. They've been reduced to 12 cards. And what's going to happen is the first player is going to turn over uh, each card, and they're going to see what they have. So the first card, here we have a Crypt. Uh, and so then uh, here's the, the, the color of it. it. It shows that it is um, the silver color. And uh, if you claim this card uh, in, in a turn, uh, the, the effect is that all players draw one less card this turn. And then if you play it later as part of a bid, you will also enact that power. And so we'll go ahead and draw the next one. And we have a fountain. And so it is the gold color and it has the draw card ability. And finally, the castle, we have the treasury. Uh, you may discard three cards to build one level of any suit. And the suits are obviously the four different colors. So, all right. So we have those three cards, and then we have our personal deck. I'm going to put that over here. And we have our four cards that we open up with. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that when you pick one of the cards... Uh, to be the one that is being bid on, everybody gets to use that card uh, communally, uh, meaning that it is it counts towards their bid. And so what you can do is you can actually, if I pick like that gold card and I have these two gold, I could combine that with the phone and I can say I have three gold. And then that's my bid. You know, you have your cards in your hand. Now, the thing is, is that... Uh, Somebody else can outbid you by bidding four color of another uh, deck, or they could just simply say, I'm going to bid, you know, three gold and a crystal. And that would be enough to beat your bid because it's an extra one. And this isn't a thing where you each get to bid something where uh, you get back to you and you get to raise your bid. So you have to pick your bid wisely and hope that nobody else is going to outbid you for that particular card. Now, it is also quite possible that you might bid something so good that nobody else can uh, beat you. There's a couple other things as far as the bids go, but it is important uh, that if you match the color, so like say somebody bids uh, three marble or jade, jade is considered to be the lowest suit. Marble is like the least uh, like valuable. And so if somebody you know picked three of a different one, like three crystal, uh, that would beat it because crystal is more valuable uh, than, than marble. The order of the suits is uh, gold is the most valuable, then silver, then crystal, and then marble. So just keep that in mind. Now, I haven't even talked about the building the towers because that's how you win. The person who has the highest tower of their two, they, they take the lowest of their two towers, and whoever has the highest tower that is the lowest of the two towers uh, will win the game. And you win it, so let's say we go through the bid process, and just let's, let's, so I, I say three, I say three gold, and nobody else outbids me for whatever reason, and maybe they don't want the fountain. And what you do then also is I should mention that you take the fountain and you put that where everybody can see it. So you put it in the middle of the table, like so, to show that that you know card is out there, and then you would turn the next card over to you know so people can see. Let's see what we got here. So we got path. You remove the top level from either of your towers to draw three cards. So that's kind of like a, a risk reward type of thing. But then, so you bid that, and then you get it, and then so you would get the gold, and you 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 put that in your discard. But then you get to take the power, and so then you draw a card from your deck and put that in your hand, so you'd have that for the next bid. And whenever you don't win a bid, so the other three people playing, uh, you know, if they didn't win the bid uh, for the card, normally they get one card. They get to draw one of the cards into their hand. So maybe they start with four cards, they go up to five. Or maybe they, you know, if we're later into the game, you know, they, they're at two cards or five cards or six cards or whatever. There's no limit to the number of cards you can have in your hand. However, if you win a gold or a silver card, Everybody gets to draw an extra card. So in this case, if I won that, everybody else at the table would get to draw two cards and put them in your hand. But I take these, and I'll just put them in my discard over here, and then, you know, after I get through my, my deck, I will then shuffle up my discards, and I'll play those. So when I do this, however, because I've built a gold, what's going to happen is I'm going to take a gold tower piece, and I'm going to put it in front of you. Now, mind you, I'm going to be building two. But here's the trick. If I build a gold piece to start, as soon as I want to build my other tower, I have to get another gold. 
to put on the other side. My towers have to match. So the next turn, somebody goes through the whole process, let's say, you know, and, and they, 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 they pick the crypt, you know, to bid on. So we're going to flip the next one over. Uh, turns out it is another marble. But so we go through the whole process. Let's say I won that, you know, for whatever reason. I won the crypt. So what I have to do is I have a silver. I couldn't put that next to uh, my gold. I have to keep stacking. And so let's say I win the next one and I get a green. Let's say I win the next one. I win a green. All of a sudden I got this one that's a four level tower. But I haven't been able to build it. So if I if the game ended, I wouldn't. I'd have no points. I wouldn't have the other tower. When I finally get another gold tower, I can put that one down, and then you know I'll just hold these up so you can see. You know I I would have matching you know towers. I'd have two gold in the bottom, and that's the trick of the game. You know you 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 want to kind of populate your deck with powerful cards that have powerful abilities uh, that you can use, but you also want to make sure that you don't. You know, put yourself too far behind the eight ball, and, and don't take too long a time. You know, building up one of your one of your two sides to your to your palace towers, uh, and then all of a sudden the end of the game shows up, and you've got almost no points. Because it doesn't matter how what you, what cards you have in your deck; it doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is whether or not you win is these two towers, and that is like the really really cool and really really clever thing about this game. It's 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 I like it because of the fact that you know you you're doing everything, you know, to like, you know, make your deck better, getting cool cards, getting cool powers and using them. But if you don't pay attention to actually trying to win the game, you might come up with a really cool deck and you might have some really cool stuff going on with the cards that you have, but you're going to lose to somebody that concentrated on actually getting basically the victory points, which is having uh, two very good towers that match back and forth. Uh, there's one other inkling uh, that I want to show you as far as uh, the, the bidding process that, that just keep in mind. And uh, that's um, some special cards that, you, that, that, that show up in the decks. There are cards, and they have them for all the suits. And you'll notice it says Trellis here. The card counts as an additional gold for bidding. So if you actually have this card, and you this is like the only gold card you have, you could say I'm bidding two gold with this card all by itself. Also, it should be mentioned that if it's one of the cards that's here and you place it to be bid on, I'm sorry, it would place it to be bid on up here, that's a two gold card in that situation that everybody can add on to. So it's just, it, it's one of those things that um, you always count the card's special ability that you're bidding on, but, and usually um, it only comes into effect uh, after the card has been claimed. But in some cases, like this, because of the fact that it is, you know, during the bidding process, that the, the power com comes into effect during the bidding process, uh, you have to use it uh, for that purpose and use it at that time. And like, there's like this, like the greenhouse. Uh, the count this card is a suit of your choice for bidding. So it's kind of like a wild card. And so if it was here, everybody would consider it a wild card and they could use it to build up their bid, if you will. So uh, there you go. You should have a really good idea of how to play palaces. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I like, you know, it's, it's not like really trick taking and it's not really deck building. It's, and it's not really <laughs> building a tower either. It, it's, it's a really neat combination of mechanisms uh, that, that makes, makes people think and makes people try to, uh, you know, not only build their deck, but also be cognizant uh, of the right color of card that they're looking for and maybe passing a few times and not trying to uh, win certain bids uh, just because maybe the card out there uh, isn't what they need and kind of bide their time and it makes them makes for some really really good decision making during the game but i'll go more into that uh, in my conclusion which i'll do right now all right, you should have a real good idea of how to play palaces. I didn't want to show you all the cards because, you know, there's cool little powers and abilities in each one. And this is a game that has some exploration going on in it. And I really enjoyed, um, I mean, I enjoyed all the plays I had. I played it a good ten times now. This is yet another one of the Undead Viking games that gets taken to lunch at work. And and my, my work gaming group has enjoyed this one immensely. Um... Also, I mean, I, like I said, I don't know uh, what the production or uh, as far as when it gets published or what they're going to look at, but people would walk by and they'd see these little discs and we're making the towers and it was it was quite the eye grabber as far as people getting it like, what's going on over here kind of thing. And they, they are actually pretty interested. And I actually got a few people to sit down and play it, you know, just, uh, you know, randoms, if you will. And they they all had fun. I think I think the cool thing about it is it, it's the, the mechanism as far as the bid goes, um, you know, it it works really 
really well uh, as far as like lots of people have played games, you know, with that bid process. I mean, it's just they 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 played uh, like classic card games that have that in them, and um, they're comfortable with it and and they they understand it. Um, the the cool thing I liked about the bid is that it's it's one of those things too. If like you start off with the bid. Um, uh, and I should mention, I apologize, uh, the, the person, when you pick the card that you want, the person to your left is the first person to bid, uh, not you. Because when you pick it, that's kind of like the bonus you have. You get to go last, and so when it gets all around to you, then you can decide whether or not you're going to like use your cards to try to beat the bid. So, I apologize for that. But the thing is, is that... Um, that adds a level of intricacy to it because of the fact that you're picking a card that you think you either a you think that you're going to be able to have a really good chance of taking it and it's going to help out your your deck really well, or b you're picking a card that you think the other people are going to want and they're going to use up their cards to get it and therefore put more cards into your hand because of the fact that they're going to take it and then you're going to get more cards and then you're going to be even more powerful uh, for the next possible hand. And so I do enjoy that whole process of making that decision of whether or not I actually want to use up my cards in my hand or do I want to wait for something better or do I want to try it for a different card. And um, I like uh, that aspect of palaces a great deal, you know, and it's 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 a tried and true mechanism that um, is being presented in a new and uh, exciting way. I guess it sounds like a commercial, but it really is. I mean, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect about the game. Um, it's it's from Guerrilla Games. It's from Jeff Sidek, and I've enjoyed his games a great deal. Um, I, I really enjoy Lifeboat um, and Desert Island. Was I edited a video of that a while ago, and you know both of those games were a lot of fun. But they had a lot of player interaction and a lot of uh, things going on. And so when when he described this game to me, I mean, I was like, I was excited to play it because I really liked the idea of it. I really like these small travel card games. I've been playing a lot of them lately. Um, but you know, I was. It was one of those things where I was like, you know, I, I felt, and, and I apologize, he might have several games out there that he's designed of this type, uh, you know, or that he's published of this type, but it, it seemed like a deviation from what, I, what I'm what i used to. I'm used to playing games with cannibals on a lifeboat with him. And so, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised at, at the, the depth of this one, the, the, the choices that you that you get presented with, and also just like the moments of feeling clever, and I've said that in many, many of my videos, I, I enjoy when I have like a, a perfect situation where I'm able to put together a perfect bid uh, for a card for that will allow me to you know build a, a tower piece that fits perfectly uh, on my lower level tower. Now I should mention there are several cards that allow you to build uh, an extra tower, you know, or like it says, you know, it'll say like discard a card and or discard two cards, and you can build another another green level, or or discard you know three cards and build another, whatever, you know. So they allow you to build another level. Now, when those happen, you take all of the card actions after you win the card. You take all those extra actions that are on those cards, and you take them uh, as you know in whatever order you want. Um, you you can you know stagger them back and forth to kind of put together a good chain that'll make you know and and you when you have one of those moments and the, those clever moments as I call them where all of a sudden like you'll take and you'll say okay then I'm going to build a green then a, and then a blue and then a gold and then a you know, a silver and you're like you'll have this like cool little chain where you'll add certain levels and it just works perfectly and and then you can sit there and smile quietly to yourself and and most likely have to wait several rounds before you finally get enough cards in your hand uh, before you can bid again and that's the other thing I really like about the game is because of the fact that you're spending those cards and then you don't get to draw any. It It is a game where, like, you have to, like I said, make really good decisions as far as when you're going to use up your cards. And um, it also... It, it prevents a runaway. It prevents somebody from just getting all these really good cards and just having this great deck and just, you know, trouncing everyone. It, it is one of those things where... Uh, kind of self-regulates, you know, parody, if you will, if you want to use that word, you know, if you're a fan of the NFL. It, it keeps people, um, you know, at the same level. And so I've, I've yet to have a game that didn't, you know, come down to one or two or three points right at the end, you know, as far as it. And the last thing, and I, <laughs> but I really like, is the fact that the game actually does like let the players kind of be in charge of the timer as far as like the cards. You know, it's like if you're ahead and you think that you can, you're staying ahead, you know, you can look 
see how many cards are left, you know, in, in the in, in each deck, and then you can like, you know, there's only three left in, in the marble deck. Okay, I need to burn through those. I need I need every single time it gets back to me on my turn, I need to, I need to pick I I should say not marble deck, but like the garden deck. I need I need to use up that garden deck, you know, as quickly as possible. And hopefully somebody else isn't really paying attention and they they, they pick the garden uh card as well so it's 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 a fun thing that like it adds another aspect it adds another level uh to the decisions as well so there you go uh so yeah i mean if, if you like if you like car games like small little car games that like have a huge a lot huge amount of depth and like a lot of fun uh tied into them um i'd strongly suggest you checking out uh palaces uh, from gorilla games so uh there you go if you have any questions about palaces or anything at all you can by all means post those or send me an email or whatever i'll be happy to answer that to the best of my ability um as always i really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video it really means a lot to me and until next time i am the end viking telling you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye.